As you guys know, NASCAR is known for its high speeds. Not faster than F1, but still very competitive racing at very fast speeds. Daring oval races where drivers race side by side at speeds of over 200 miles per hour. This racing style comes with many dangers often resulting in huge wrecks. From Randy Lou's scary shunt in 1984 to Ryan Priest's disastrous Daytona in 2023, we'll look at all the biggest moments in between. So get ready for some wild high-speed action. You're watching Oreki Rai, and these are the worst crashes in NASCAR history. Make sure you hit subscribe for more videos just like this. First up is one of the most jaw-dropping crashes ever throughout the decades of NASCAR history. Very few moments are as embedded in fans' memories as much as this crash from Mike Harmon during practice for the 2002 Bush Series race at Bristol. The track is known as Thunder Valley, and on this day in 2002, Mike Harmon found out why. While traveling through Turn 2, disaster struck in a matter of seconds. He suddenly lost control, slamming hard into the wall on his right. To make matters even worse, Harmon hit the crossover gate, making for a tremendous impact. NASCAR said the gate hadn't been secured properly, so as Harmon made contact, his car split down the middle, was torn into two pieces, and instantly burst into flames. It then lifted off the ground and catapulted back onto the track, being hit by another car at top speed. This caused a massive secondary impact for Harmon, spinning his car and leaving spectators expecting the worst. Miraculously, just moments later, Harmon climbed out of his crumpled wreck, which was made easier by the fact that the whole cockpit had been shattered and was completely exposed to the elements. Safety measures in NASCAR were tested on this day, and Harmon luckily came away with very minor injuries and went on to compete in the race later that weekend. That second up is a more recent crash, but that doesn't mean it wasn't as vicious. The harrowing crash that occurred during the 2020 Daytona 500 involved Ryan Newman on the final lap just before he was about to take glory in NASCAR's biggest race of the year. Fans watched in shock as his number six car was hit by Blaney and catapulted into the air, causing it to flip in an insane turn of events. Oh, back over wreck and big time on the front stretch. In another scary turn of events, it then landed on its roof in a massive wreck, and spectators watched in shock as Newman's car continued to slide down the track with sparks flying and quickly catching on fire once it came to rest. Hamlin up the outside! Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air! Goes up. Newman! Upside down. In a shower of sparks on his roof, Ryan Newman comes across the line, fourth. This crash was a massive reminder of the danger that is inherent in all racing, especially in super speedway racing at tracks like the Daytona International Speedway. Amazingly, the ongoing safety innovations in NASCAR meant that Newman survived the massive shunt. Next up is definitely one of the hardest crashes ever witnessed in NASCAR, Michael McDowell's bone-chilling wreck while attempting to qualify for the 2008 race at Texas Motor Speedway is one that fans will never forget. As he went out for his single lap qualifying attempt, McDowell's number 00 car hit the oil absorbing material in turn one that was put down for the last car's engine failure. This caused him to suddenly lose control at a speed of 200 miles per hour, causing his car to devastatingly slam into the wall head on, barrel roll, and flip multiple times down the track, taking insane bumps along the way. The car then came to rest in a crazy mangled ball of metal. Although the crash was a heart-in-mouth incident, McDowell managed to climb from the car uninjured. Next up is probably the most chilling crash that ever occurred in NASCAR, this time in the NASCAR Truck Series during the 2000 Daytona Truck Series race. Jeff Bodine's world was literally turned upside down. His truck was hit by another driver, causing an insane wreck. Unbelievably, it was thrown up and into the fencing at over 170 miles per hour, airborne and barrel rolling multiple times. The breathtaking spectacle continued as it was ripped apart by the fencing as it flew down the track, being hit again by multiple cars in what looked more like an airplane crash than a car accident. As his truck was ripped to shreds, debris was scattered onto both the track and the fans in the grandstand, who got far closer to the action than they would have liked. Incredibly, Bodine survived the crazy wreck with only a few broken bones. Carl Edwards' unfortunate crash at the 2009 Aaron's 499 at Talladega Super Speedway is one that many fans regard as the best finish ever in NASCAR history. Edwards was about to take a momentous victory at Talladega, but that was before Brad Keselowski got involved. On the final corner before the checkered flag, Keselowski tried an overtake for the lead on the bottom of the track. 
Edwards's car made contact and it sent him into a massive flight into the fencing in a spectacular, shocking fashion. Being smashed into by another oncoming car and showering the crowd with debris in the process. The outright violence of the crash resulted in him not even finishing the race. Edwards thankfully came away unharmed. Let's go back in time a bit, shall we? Back in the 1980s, safety was still improving, but many of the standards and features that we are used to in today's world of motorsport simply did not exist back then. As a result, when fans saw a huge crash, they were very worried about the well-being of the driver, and injuries were far more common. So when the 1987 Talladega 500 took place, spectators were left in awe of the almighty moment that featured Bobby Allison, especially those sitting right behind the fence where he crashed. As one of the real oh, we have a problem! Bobby Allison with a horrible crash here on the front stretch. As Allison drove at over 200 miles per hour, seemingly out of nowhere, his car went airborne and smashed the fence, being torn to pieces and leaving debris flying through the grandstand. Luckily, the fence didn't break, or this would have been a lot worse. This crash was the reason for NASCAR introducing restrictor plates, which limited the top speeds of the cars to try and stop frightening and violent crashes like this from ever happening again. Sticking to the same era, and just a year later in fact, the 1988 Daytona 500 also saw a jaw-dropping crash involving fan favorite Richard Petty. Coming off turn 4, Petty made contact with two other cars, and at these sorts of speeds on a super speedway, that rarely ends well. Right, turn number 4, Richard Petty's car goes airborne, end over end, there's two or three other cars in it. Petty has hit the wall very hard. He gets hit again as the car came to rest at the entrance to Pit Road. Petty's car is really smashed front and rear. His car immediately took flight and began to flip, and within seconds was tumbling down the track upside down. The car then flipped almost 10 times in what was one of the wildest rides for a NASCAR driver ever, with fans being unaware that it was even possible for a crash to be as wicked as the one they were witnessing. Petty's car then slid down the track, but just as it came to a stop and Petty thought the carnage was over, he was hit at top speed by another car, causing his own machinery to be torn up even more in a devastating second impact as it spun multiple times. But Daytona in those days was definitely not for the light-hearted. Okay, now back to modern-day NASCAR Cup Series on NASCAR's second visit to the Daytona International Speedway in 2023. Ryan Priest was hoping to have a smooth day, avoid damage to his machinery, and go home with a solid result. But the ruthless nature of the fan-favorite Floridian track had yet another twist in store. This crash was unlike any other in recent NASCAR history. It was a race that brought more media coverage to the series than any car owner or promoter could imagine, but for all the wrong reasons. Now for Harvick. Oh, oh and around goes a couple cars. Priest upside down. He's barrel rolling through the grass. Ryan Priest upside down in the infield. Priest moved down and hit another car, sending him flying high into the night sky and violently smashing into the ground. The car continued to tumble down the track, barrel rolling almost a dozen times in a stunning show of destruction. The car then bounced so high into the air that it was up about five times the height of the car before catching on fire. This was definitely the scariest wreck in many, many years. In case we needed another example that super speedway racing can produce massive crashes involving flips, barrel rolls, and heavy hits, Elliot Sadler provided in this unbelievable 2003 smash at Talladega. During the final laps, the tension was building as the drivers fought for position, with Sadler in the top three for the lead, pushing the limits of top speed and tight slipstream. Sadler, driving his number 38 Ford, got a bit more action than he was hoping for as the pack roared towards the checkered flag. Sadler's car was hit from behind, causing it to lift off the ground in a shocking turn of events. The car then barrel-rolled multiple times into the banking of the corner, viciously throwing him down onto the grass, leaving onlookers momentarily breathless. He was another victim of a nasty high-speed incident who had luck on his side as he somehow survived this close call. Talking about close calls, Rusty Wallace's massive crash during the Talladega race in 1993 remains a huge moment in his famed career. 
Wallace was fighting for the lead on the final lap of the race, having competed in a fierce duel for position in the previous few minutes. Noble checkered is waving, Ernie Evans wins and Rusty spins and gets airborne! And flips wildly right at the start-finish line, very reminiscent of his accident at Daytona. Oh, man. In an attempt to finish as high as possible, the fan favorite number three of Dale Earnhardt hit Wallace's car, flew through the air looking momentarily like he would never return to ground. As his car stayed airborne for so long, wins and rusty spins and gets airborne and flips wildly, he barrel rolled down the front stretch, taking multiple heavy hits tearing up his race car in the process, leaving fans and fellow drivers in complete shock. Remarkably, Wallace emerged from this wreckage mostly unscathed. Now what about this near disaster from 2015? Austin Dillon's harrowing crash at the Coke Zero 400 race in Daytona remains one of the biggest, scariest wrecks in NASCAR history. While driving the iconic number three car, Dillon was fighting for the win on the final lap, but disaster struck. And the big one happens behind them! Oh my God! Contact with another car sent him straight into the catch fence at close to 200 miles per hour, causing a Daytona finish for the ages. The impact was seismic, with Dylan's car being ripped apart by the safety fencing, which was left completely torn open due to the violence of the crash. Debris from his and others flew straight into the grandstands, injuring a total of 21 unlucky fans. Somehow, Dylan emerged from his car, which at this stage only consisted of his roll cage and a few panels, with only minor injuries to his tailbone and arm. Drivers and fans ultimately got lucky, as nobody was killed in this outrageously dangerous wreck. In case you haven't noticed, Daytona Shore has provided us with plenty of talking points over the years. And in 1984, NASCAR's popularity was soaring, and it was every driver's dream to compete in the biggest race of the year, the Daytona 500. So when they held two qualifying races before the 500 to determine who would get in and who would go home, drivers were giving it their all. But one driver who may have pushed it that bit too far was two-time NASCAR Busch Series champion Randy LaJoie. LaJoy suffered an absolutely horrific crash driving his number seven car at the famous banked oval. While coming off a corner into the draft of another car, LaJoy lost control and headed down to his left at full speed with zero chance of getting his car back on the straight and narrow. Oh, the level and in trouble is 07 LaJoy. Randy LaJoy slamming into the wall. Randy LaJoy out of Norwalk, Connecticut, destroying his automobile and he could hardly have picked a worse corner to lose control on because in front of him was a low concrete wall with barely any crash protection. Racing for an impending disaster, LaJoy's car went sideways and was fired into the wall as if it was shot from a cannon, instantly breaking up on impact in a devastating blow. The destroyed wreck came to rest, billowing smoke in the process and leaving fans in awe of the remnants that lay before them. So there we have it, the 10 worst NASCAR crashes of all time, as we saw, big wrecks are common in high-speed, close-quarter oval racing, and when drivers' careers are on the line, sometimes lives are also on the line. Let us know in the comments which of these crashes you thought was the craziest, and tell us if we missed any. Please smash the like button and subscribe for more motorsports content. This has been a crazy video. See you in the next one.